If you want to learn more about the most important indicator for an active short-term trader, reading the tape, then stick around for this video. In this video, I will demonstrate how to use reading the tape with three recent trades from our prop desk. Get a peek into the trading done on a professional proprietary trading desk and our most effective trading indicator in this next video. Hi, I'm Mike Bellafuri, managing partner of SMB Capital, a proprietary trading firm located in Midtown Manhattan. I'm also the author of the trading classic, One Good Trade, and the playbook. Click our subscribe button so you don't miss any of the trading videos produced for the trading community. In three trades, we're gonna share how reading the tape helped inform trading decisions. Reading the tape also possesses the benefits of being the most effective indicator we use, being an indicator that we've used since the start of my trading career. It helps improve our risk reward in trades. It allows us to trade bigger. It's a leading indicator as opposed to a lagging indicator. It helps us to find setups not yet identifiable on our charts, and it helps you succeed in volatile markets, and much more. So stick around, and we're gonna run through this vital trading indicator to improve your trading. If you wanna learn four more real-world setups that our traders use, including the simple setup that we teach all of our new traders, and the setup that turned one of our traders into a seven-figure big money earner, check out our free webinar, which we're currently running. Just go ahead and click this link to sign up for the free webinar right now. You're gonna learn more in a couple of hours from this awesome trading webinar, this awesome trading workshop, than from years of online education. Okay, let's talk about how reading the tape can help us inform our trading decisions. So this is what we call the level two, for those of you who haven't seen it before. This is where the bids are. You can see ARCA 3294 for 700 shares. This is the offer right here. You can see INET for 3295. And this, these are the time and sales. So you can see 32.945 goes off at 100 shares. So this is the basis of the level two. When we're talking about reading the tape, this is what we're talking about. The time and sales shows us all of the trades that are going off in the marketplace and for what size and for what price. And the bids and the offers are showing us where people are willing to buy and sell and for what size. I recently received an email from one of our students in SMB DNA who put together this reading the tape examples. And did a really good job and this uh, inspired me to write a blog post which I wrote about recently and I was actually really surprised by how many people were interested in the article that I wrote. Admittedly, I wrote the article and I thought it was just going to be kind of a mediocre article and d didn't exactly think it would resonate with a large group of people. And I put it out there on social media and I was completely wrong. And the response was much larger than I had anticipated. And so uh, that inspired me to talk a little bit more about reading the tape and this video. And so this student from SMB DNA put together longs and shorts information that helps us as active traders inform our decisions to make trades. And so example one is, hey, bids are stepping up. So that means that our bids here are 32.94 and now we start to see our bids uh, go a little bit higher. Or most transactions are done on the ask. So we're taking a look at our time and sales and we're noticing that most of the volume is being done on the offer. P people are paying the offer. That's a bullish signal. Or th it's thin on the ask of the offer. So we look at the offer compared to the bid and the offers have much less to sell than it looks like people have to buy on the bid. Or there's a buyer holding the bid, refreshing. 
So we're taking a look at the bid, we're looking at our time in sales, and they're repeating and they're repeating at, at 94 cents, and this buyer just will not drop. Or there's higher highs and higher lows. It's more of a chart pattern. Big prints on the ask. So you're looking at the offer, and you see a really large sale that gets done, much more so than you had seen before. That can be a bullish indicator. Uh, we see the ask spoofing. I'm just going to let that go. That's a little bit too much insider baseball. You see the spies get, get higher. They're stronger. So we're looking at potentially buying this particular stock, and we notice spies getting a lot stronger. That may give us some information to buy the stock. All right, most uh, upticks. So we're watching the stock, and it's most, mostly ticking higher. Buyers accumulating. So we're watching the bids, and we're seeing an area where people are absorbing the order flow. And that area is not dropping. This, this area that we're watching is just not dropping, as opposed to, hey, how come these guys who are buying it, how come they're not dropping and going to try and buy this a little bit lower? So the fact they're not dropping can be a, a, a bullish signal. All right, and so and then uh, we think about ask stepping down. So if we're short something, this is going to be information that could be in our favor. So we're looking at the offer, and we notice the seller at, at 95 cents, and then we start to notice him stepping lower and selling at 90 cents. That can be good if we're short. We notice that most transactions are on the bid. So if we're short and they're hitting the bids, hitting the bids, hitting the bids, that can be good for our short position. And we're short and we notice that it's thin on the bid. There's more to sell on the offer that's showing itself than there is to buy on the bid. If we're short, we like to see that. Big prints on the bid. So they're whacking the bids and we think they're then going to drop. That can be bullish. So. This is a really good primer for bullish signals, whether we're long or whether we're short. And student does a really nice job with that and asks me in a question, I wrote about this in a blog post, which one is more important and gives me three scenarios. And that led me to my answer. And my answer was there's not one particular thing that's more important on the tape that I'm looking for. And my answer was, we're using the tape as an indicator, certainly the most effective indicator that we have as short-term traders, the most, and historically the most. And I've been trading for, uh, it's, it's uh, 20 years now. And I used reading the tape as an indicator 20 years ago, and it was the most effective, the most effective indicator that we had. And today I use it, and it is the most effective indicator that we have to make trade decisions. It's not the only indicator that we use. It's not the only indicator that we use. And that's where some people get lost. It's one of other indicators that we use, but it certainly is the most effective. And the traders that I work with, the large traders that I work with, the seven-figure traders that I work with inside the firm and outside the firm, to a man, to a trader, are working on one commonality. See it, see it, see it, see it. And what they mean by that is they have a thesis for a trade, but, but that thesis is being confirmed by the tape, by reading the tape. The order flow is confirming that their thesis is correct. And so my answer, based on my experience working with these large traders and what they're working on, these are seven-figure guys that we're coaching to help them make more money, is they develop a thesis, then they look for a setup from their playbook. So you're going to look up for a setup in your playbook. Then they look for confirmation from the tape. So they look for this most effective trading indicator. Then they fight for price. And that equals one good trade. So it's not just using the tape. It's not just reading the tape to make a trade decision. 
it's putting that inside a list of other variables to help us make really good trade decisions. But it's a very important indicator. And so I haven't talked a lot this a lot before, but we like to say fight for price. And I wrote this tweet recently, and I was inspired to write it after actually doing a daily report card with a very large trader who trades uh, overseas. And uh, I gave him this advice, and then I went on Twitter and shared this with the trading community. For active traders, fighting for price is important as it sets your risk reward. This is particularly true as you trade bigger. This seems counterintuitive for large trading perhaps, but it's not. You would think that as traders are trading really large size that they wouldn't care that much about price, but the reality is, is that they do. Where you start a position determines your exit. And if you're not fighting for price and getting for really good prices, you're gonna have to set an exit that's not as good as if you got a better price. Fight for price. So I wanna show you three examples recently from our prop desk on how we're using reading the tape to help us make better trade decisions. So let's say you wanna make a momentum trade a Roku reported solid earnings and was a stock in play recently. Let's say you wish to play this for a momentum trade on the open. A momentum trade is in your playbook. Roku opens and 54 holds the offer with, her, with a buyer paying the offer with velocity. This paying of the offer with velocity is a bullish signal. Roku pulls in 50 cents after that offer doesn't lift, but then retests that 54 area. And this is a chart from that day. You can see it getting held up here at 54. And so now we want to make a momentum trade. So momentum trade is I've got a news catalyst. I've got a level that if it clears, I want to get long. I've got a, an important level that I'm watching. The tape is confirming to me that I'm more likely to be right. So in this case, we want to see that 54 offer lift. And if it does, we want to pay the offer and trade it on the long side. And we can trade that as a scalp for the most active traders, or we can use it as a signal to start a intraday swing trade. What I mean by that is playing for intraday momentum to the upside, trying to hold it until that intraday momentum to the upside wanes, fails, or trend lines break. So we get this signal from reading the tape at 54. It cannot get above 54. We like the news catalyst. We want an area where we can get long. One of the trades we can make is the momentum trade in our playbook. We need to see 54 lift. We're getting a signal even prior to that, that this could be strong because of the velocity of how they're paying the offer at 54. So when it pulls in 50 cents and goes back up to 54, we're very suspicious that it's gonna lift. And when it does, we wanna go for it. Okay, so we're putting together variables to make trades. We're using reading the tape as a signal, an effective signal that it's ready to buy. It's not the only way, by the way, we could have bought that stock, but that is a way to make a, a trade in that particular in that particular opportunity. All right, let's say we want to make a bounce trade. So we just showed us, we just showed how we can use the tape to make a momentum trade. We can also use it to make a bounce trade. In this case, huge offer gets taken as we're looking to make a bounce trade. And then after that, the stock moves higher. So we're taking a look at a daily chart, trading a, a recent stock that was really in play. And you can see it gaps down 40%. 50% on the open, stock gaps down on lower guidance. You see that big gap down? We're thinking about our thesis is, hey, it's gonna bounce. There's value buying where the stock gaps down and starts to hold lows and starts curling up. So our thesis is it's gonna bounce 
and we start to see it can't trade below 10 and then we start to see it hold a little bit higher at 10 10 can't break through 10 and bid start stepping up higher all right and then we want to see it get above VWAP in this particular trade for our bounce trade there was resistance forming around 1040 because every time it touched 1040 it pulled away once it got tighter and closer to 1040 a huge offer appeared at 1039 for over 50,000 shares as soon as the offer was taken on the stock as soon as that offer was taken out the stock popped 10 cents broke the 1040s it broke that resistance level at 1040s got above VWAP and then pulled in to retest that 1040s and then went up 70 cents higher to 11.10. So we're putting together a bounce trade. We want it to hold above you up. We want it to stop going down. We want it to hold higher. We want a signal from the tape. Couldn't trade above a particular price. Price is really holding the stock up. Gets through there. Bam, it gets through there. They, they clear out that offer. Finally gets to a price that it hasn't gotten to, finally gets above the area of resistance that we wanted to, we can either buy the pull-in or we can buy it when it clears right away. This is how we can use reading the tape for a bounce trade. All right, let's talk about another example of how we can use reading the tape to make a particular trade. So around 1045, and this particular stock happened to be CG, CGC, we sold off below an important support level of 30. That's our support level we're watching, and then quickly reclaimed that level and started consolidating. This showed us that 30 is a significant line in the sand with buyers and sellers battling because sellers wanted to push this below 30 and keep it there, but buyers bid it back up to hold 30. So there's a battle going on there. From here, we wanted to watch for 30 to become support and use this level as a potential long setup back up towards VWAP, which was about 3150 at the time. So after breaking up through 30, stock pulls back, tried testing under 30 again, but this time held higher with a low of 29.80. The tape sh uh, slowed. It's slow below 30 because the bidders were passively absorbing, stopping an acceleration on the tape to the downside. The next retest at 30 holds stronger with 30 not even dropping on the bid. And this shows us whoever's propping up the stock is serious about accumulating. There was also a lot more green prints on the offer. That means people were paying the offer and the bid size was about double the ass size. From here, that 30 support tested one more time and 30 held the bid without dropping. It holds this 30 bid. It held on 30 for the shortest amount of time on this test showing that buyers were more eager to bid it up from that level. And from here, we're looking for the chart pattern to start holding higher, to make a higher low and curl up breaking through this resistance. So as the stock started to curl up towards 3050, the bids were slowly stepping up about every five cents. And once the bid retested 3030, the tape started speeding up towards the top of the range. Due to this speed on the tape and a higher low and more prints on the offer and the spy reversing to the upside, all of this, all of this gave us more conviction to get long and see if we can get back up towards that VWAP area. And this played out well. It trended up towards our VWAP target. And, you know, overall watching how the stock acts in a consolidation range is a good, you know, around the 30 is a good time to gather information of whether buyers or sellers are in control. In this case, to continue with bids holding higher and the slow tape during the sell-offs helped give us a long bias. So we're using our reading the tape skills to help us to get into a pull-in trade. Strong, we want to figure out where we could buy it into a pull-in. The tape is showing us how. So what we learned 
from this particular video. Reading the tape is our most effective indicator. We use reading the tape with other indicators. Thesis plus setup plus confirmation plus fight for price equals one good trade. And we showed you three trade examples where we use reading the tape to help us make better trade decisions. Hope that helped. Reading the tape is a wonderfully effective trading indicator and skill that I all hope you spend time on. If you walk away from this video with one idea, it's that if you want to be a short-term active equities trader, you got to learn this skill. You can't just look at charts. I'm sorry. The best traders that I'm working with inside and outside of the, the U.S., have these skills, are using this information to improve their trading. It's, it's, it is a commonality amongst all of them. I need to see it. I need to see it. Don't get out in front of an idea. Be patient. Wait to see it. It's a commonality to a trader that they're all working on. So if you don't have this skill in your, in your quiver, you want to develop it. If you're not using reading the tape as one of your indicators to get into your trades and you're underperforming, start working on it. Go ahead and click our subscribe button so you don't miss any of our trading videos produced for the trading community. Please add your feedback in the comments section for the videos you'd like us to produce next and what you found helpful about this video. From all of us at SMB, trade well.